In this tutorial, we create a wacky waving inflatable salesman. Uh, this is one angle of our render. Let's go to the other angle. You can also view it from, yeah. And you can see our wacky waving inflatable salesman in action. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, step number one to make your wacky inflatable salesman is to select your default queue, press X, delete, and press Shift A. And we're gonna make use of a cylinder. Go to your add cylinder options over here. Let's change the verse to 20, and let's increase this to four, and let's reduce the thickness to about 0 0.2, and then we're gonna press GZ2, numpad one. We can see it's perfectly on the red line, which is great. Right click, shade smooth. We're gonna go to object data properties, normals, auto smooth at 30 degrees is perfect. Now we can press tab, go into edit mode. And first thing you wanna do is press three to choose face select and then choose the top face, press X and delete that face. And while I'm at it, I better turn on screen recording. Oh, it is on, okay, good, perfect. And we can select the bottom face, go to the object data properties in the vertex group add a vertex group, rename this vertex group PIN, and click assign. Deselect and select to see if it's working, it is, which is perfect, and why do we call it PIN? Because that's exactly what we're gonna do with that. Next thing you wanna do is press numpad one, scroll out, press control R. Let's make about 20 cuts. At the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the amount of cuts over here, and I'm just scrolling the mouse wheel up to get those cuts. Right, let's try that again, control R. And 1920, as you can see, click. Click. I'm very happy with that. Next thing we want to do is create our design at the top here. Press 2 to choose edge select. Press Alt and select all these edges like this. And then hold in Shift and select every second edge over here at the top of this rim. And it's a bit of a boring task, but it needs to get done. We're almost there. All right. Just like that, it's done. Press numpad one. And we are gonna press E to extrude, Z to lock to the Z axis, and we're gonna lift it up to about, I don't know, about, yeah, 0 0.3. There we go. Perfect. Next thing we wanna do is create arms. Press numpad one to be in front orthographic view. Judging it by this, we probably want the arms to be somewhere here. Based on that, numpad three to be in right orthographic view. We're gonna zoom in here, change to wireframe mode. We can see the blue line, so we definitely, and we're gonna press three, and we're gonna select these parts over here, and we'll change this to our individual origin, press numpad one to be in, uh, in front orthographic, and then press E to extrude 1.5, and we've got them arms. First thing you wanna, we wanna do immediately is press control R, bring this into about right next to the edge over here, about there, and press shift alt, S and pull this back all the way until the sphere on the top corner over here is one and then click. Do the same to the other side, control R, bring it all the way in and then press shift alt S and pull this all the way until the sphere is one and then click. And then let's go over here, change it to solid view mode and we're gonna select all these Press three to choose face selects. Choose all these faces, press X and delete these faces. Then press Alt. Press two to choose edge select. Press Alt to select all these edges. And actually before we move on, we actually have to create some cuts here. Control, ship, uh, so it's Control R, click. Control R, click. Just so that there's more distribution if we're gonna make this a circle. And it automatically carries over to the other side. Cool, I'm quite happy with that. Now we can press Alt and select all these edges over here. And we can press Shift Alt S and pull it all the way out until Sphere is one click, and that is looking pretty cool. Let's do the same over here. Uh, let's press three to choose all these faces. Press X to delete these faces. Press two to choose edge. Select Alt, click over here to select all these edges. Shift Alt S, pull this all the way up to one and click. Perfect. And while we add it, let's have some fun with this. Let's. Um, select a couple of these as well. So I'm gonna just uh, actually create some cuts here looking at this, Control R, click, Control R, click, Control R, click, Control R, click. Cool, I'm happier with that. And 
press alt to select all these cuts here and every second one once again we will do the same thing we have just done we created more cuts just so that the cuts look more evenly balanced without wasting too many time too much time on trying to make it perfect there we go i know this is a little bit laborious but it gives a unique result so why not here we go shift i'm holding in shift the whole time while i do this all right that's looking good so we can just press numpad one press e to extrude press x on the x-axis and type in 0 0.3 there we go if we look at that that's looking cool let's do this to the other side holding alt and every second one holding shift and just so we can deselect it here we go we're getting there slowly but surely select this select this and select this boom that's looking good numpad one press e to extrude x 0 0.3 in this case 0 0.3 is no good so backspace 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 minus 0 0.3 to make it the equal distance as the other side Perfect, let's press tab, go into object mode. Now when we look at this, we see this little mess over here. To fix that mess, we go to our modify properties, add modify, and we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and chuck this on two, which I'm quite happy with. And if you wanted to play around with this more, in edit mode, you could press control R and create a loop cut and really bring it in, but it won't give you the desired result. I think it's perfectly fine like this. However, we do have to create loop cuts here. So we're gonna press Control R and give this 10 loop cuts. Click, click. Do it to the other side as well. Control R, scroll up, 10 loop cuts, click, click. And there we go. Our basic model is complete and it's looking glorious. Now, we have to go to our physics properties, cloth simulation, and we have to change a few things here. Let's scroll all the way down to our collision. Make sure self collision is turned on for a more realistic effect turn on pressure and let's use a custom pressure of about 1.5 and let's use our shape and use the pin the vertex group we created earlier and that should be perfect however this is just going to fall to the ground if we don't have wind so let's press shift a force field wind and we need to set this to quite a high level so let's set it up to 30,000 and let's press shift A mesh plane S15 and let's give this a collision effect in this case if the material does hit the ground it's gonna hit the ground it's just not gonna fall down for infinity now when we press space bond we press play All right, I made one crucial mistake that I can show you how to avoid is I forgot to make sure my subdivision happens after the cloth simulation or else it's just gonna die. So that's one thing I made a mistake with. Go back to frame one, press space bar, and now it is looking dashing. One pro tip, just make sure your pen isn't selecting this entire object. I just went quickly clicked on select and it selected this whole thing and it explains why it's so stiff. Make sure it's only selecting this bottom piece over here and click remove first i'm going to remove this add a new pin call this pin enter and click assign once that is done i'm going to press tab go into object mode and if you want you could make this look a little bit better by just creating a loop cut and bring it down like that it just will look a little bit cleaner tab object mode and i'm going to quickly reapply the cloth simulation features uh, target pressure to custom value perfect uh, collision object and self collision and shape choose the pin and then press shift a click on force field we should be able to use wind and give the wind a strength of originally I had 30,000 press tab go into well we're in object mode already which is great and let's unhide our ground select our wind press spacebar and press R, X, Y. So this works perfectly now. That's exactly how we want it to work. Perfect. Now, 
the next step is we want to go back to keyframe one and switch to select this object here, go to materials, and we could start off with weight painting. No, let's use texture painting. Press N, click on tools, click on plus here, and we're going to use base color, and we're going to select the base color, lift this all the way up, and let's make it orange. And 32 bit float is fine, and press OK. And boom, just like that, we've got this. Next thing we want to do is select a second color. So I'm going to zoom in over here. And I'm just going to do this. And make a creepy smile. And you can also change the color again. Perhaps we want to make it black. Press F, change the size of this. And I think you get the idea. I think the more messed up I draw it, the more <laughs> scary it actually is. <laughs> this shouldn't be this much fun. Anyways, okay, let's go back. Let's take a look. Press. Also, I'm going to press F, increase this. Change the color over here to something else. I don't know, red. And spray paint this red. And take your time, have some fun. This looks like really like a crazy woman's lipstick, the way I'm painting this. I'm doing an absolute terrible job. But uh, yeah, this is not really, this is just me messing with after the fact I've showed you how to do this. And okay, cool, so I'm quite happy with that. But perhaps we wanna go the extra mile. Let's go the extra mile, press tab, go into object mode, change to our render view. <laughs> let's change the ground, let's select our plane, give it a material, change it to a glossy material, and I'm going to make this 0 0.2, give, add a wall texture, I've got an HDM, you can find HDR eyes at hdrhaven.com, they're free, I'm going to just use a, one of the random ones I always use just for better lighting when it comes to glossy textures. And what else could we do to this? You know what, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna give it a couple of materials. The first, press new. So the base material that I'm gonna use is glossy, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Make it really shine. Give it a second material, new, Tab, go into edit mode, and perhaps we want to press 3 and select all of this over here. Shift, Alt, select all of this over here. And change this to emission. 30. Assign. Make it blue. If you prefer the face, you can do what I did before, but in this case, the last thing I want to mess with is the wind. And I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to press I and click on, well, first off, if I press R to rotate the wind, that's perfect. So I'm going to press I, rotation. Switch this to my graph editor, and I'm going to select each of these. So let's start off with the x-axis. Press N. Modifiers. Add modifier. Uh, just use noise. Press spacebar and let's see how it looks. Perhaps we also want to zoom out quickly just a little bit. also increase this separation so it's not so wild but increase the strength so it's extreme let's see how it looks through our camera lens
All right, pause there. Let's select like this surface over here. It should be colliding. What well, shouldn't really be going through, but I guess the force is just too powerful. Perhaps we want to reduce the strength to about five. Press play. Let's see how it looks. Let's re reduce it, make it two, and see how it looks. Let's go back to fr the steep part of here. Okay, cool, that's perfect. Now we can choose our x-axis, do the same thing, add modifier, noise, massively increase the strength, make this 1.5. And you don't really have to mess with the z-axis. doesn't really make any sense. So that should be it. Let's choose our camera. Let's go to the object data properties of our camera. But first, we need to select our camera. And we could press G. Well, I don't want to scale this. No, perhaps I should move it back. OK, let's press. Let's find our camera quickly. And just so I can see what my camera sees, I'm going to create a new window, select this, press N, zoom in, press G, press G, here we go, and over here I can just press G and lift this up to about, to about, there and then I just increase this a little bit like that and once we're in our render settings we want to make sure bloom is on ambient occlusion screen space reflection volumetrics let's put this on four so it just looks a little bit cleaner and turn on shadows and let's change this to solid view mode let's change this to let's actually just delete this quickly camera view in also go over here turn on render region crop to region and there you have it we've got our crazy dancing man um it looks like my pc is struggling a little bit let's just make sure i didn't turn on ambient occlusion yeah so evie's just struggling that's all all right, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.